everybody! If you're new here, welcome to my channel, and if not, then welcome back to another one of my videos. Welcome everybody to my new filming setup. So if you followed me on Instagram, you would have seen my update when I said that I was repainting my room. That was earlier this week. It's currently Saturday. I moved out last Sunday and then moved back in this Thursday. Yeah, I repainted my entire room. The wall behind us used to be blue and the wall that I was on, like my old filming setup, which was literally on the other side of this room, was white. And so basically I just fucking switched them. I just wanted to move and I told my family, I was like, guys, you can't have a blue background in a YouTube video. They definitely laughed at me, but basically I got my wish. It was a huge ass project. I was not ready for the amount of effort that it took. That being said, I now have a new colored room and I'll be honest, the lighting here is much better. I have to use way less artificial light, which is awesome. So yeah, welcome to my new setup. It will probably change a little bit. I'm not too sure how I like it. We all know that I like to change shit up every once in a while, so I just don't know if I want to keep this one. It was a no, but now it might be a yes. I don't know. I do want to preface this video by saying that I just came off of like a very long fucking work day. I am very tired. It's kind of a miracle that I'm sitting right now because I just want to be flat on the ground. And literally like five minutes before I sat down, I was a zombie, but I'm actually feeling much more energized and very very excited the more I talk on camera. So yeah, if I'm lower energy, that's why. But today's video is going to be my August reading wrap up. If you've watched my previous reading wrap ups, you'll see that my like book numbers are seriously declining every month. Like February, I think it was 25 books in 28 days. May, I think it was 24 books in 31 days. 31 or 30, I don't remember. And then it just kept going down. Last month, I think I read 13 books. It may have been 14, but yeah, it's just not going as well as it was like this time last year even. So this month, I'm very happy to report that I read more books than I did last month and my reading month was great. Yes, I didn't read like as much books as I used to six months ago, but I read some awesome books and they're very recommendable. So that's a win for me. Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna get into my wrap up now. And if you see me, going like this and you see black on my hands. I was painting, that's why. So of course I'm pulling up Goodreads to look at this. I do not remember what I read at the beginning of this month. Okay, the first one that I read was for a vlog and that vlog is now up. I read five books from last month until like a few days into the month, I think. So the first one I read was this one by India R. Adams. I could literally just look at it. Hostile Saint was the book and actually I didn't read it. I DNF'd it. I did did not enjoy really where it was going. It just felt really like juvenile, but the topics weren't juvenile. Like the heroine, I'm pretty sure was like, locked in an insane asylum or something along those lines, don't quote me. And they were spending 50% trying to figure out how to get her out with. The hero was obsessed with her, but it was a different character from the character we saw at the beginning of the book. And I was so confused. And yeah, I didn't really enjoy where it was going. So I DNF'd it at 40-ish percent. Yes, I DNF'd it in a vlog. No, I don't give a fuck. This book, I feel like it could have been worth sticking around for, but I just didn't want to. <laughs> the next book I read in that vlog was Crowned. Lilith Vincent. This is book two in the pageant duet. It had just come out. Well, not just actually. It had come out a few days before that, and then I jumped on it when I had time. My full thoughts are in that video, so I'm not gonna say much, but I did enjoy it. I rated it 4.25 stars and then four on the spice scale. I think it was a great end to the duet, but I did have a few issues with it. But that being said, I really love them all together. So I was very happy to get that last book. Full thoughts in that vlog. It is my last vlog on my channel. Then I read the Twist Me series by Anna Zares. I was very, mm, what's the word, kind of intimidated to go into this one because I've seen so much good and bad shit on it. Like some people were like, oh my god, this was five stars. Some people were like, this was fucking two stars. I've seen some one star reviews too. So kind of like, I'm either gonna like it or I'm not gonna like it. Was on my TBR for a very long time and actually, I was staying over at a friend's house. It was early in the morning. Everybody was asleep. I think it was like 6 a.m. And I woke up and my phone was dead because I was irresponsible. And my Kindle was fully charged, but I didn't ask for the Wi-Fi password for my Kindle the night before. So I had to read something that was downloaded. The only two that were downloaded was Sick Fucks by Tilly Cole and then this one. And I was like, yeah, I am scared shitless by Sick Fucks. I'm definitely gonna read the Twist Me series. So I started it at like 6 a.m. and I finished it by like four. It felt like a quicker book. I don't know why. I think it was like 350 pages, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It was published in 2014, so I was a little like, mm, am I gonna like it? 
it wasn't bad, honestly. I was a little like insta lovey, and the hero was definitely an anti hero, and I feel like he was an anti hero for a bit of no reason. Like, he was rude to her, and I was like, you could just be nice. Like, it exists. But I didn't like object to anything in the book, but I didn't think he was like too unredeemable. He definitely did some nice things for her, though he was severely controlling. But yeah, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed it. I think I rated it four stars, the beginning one, second one, and the third one. I will say at the end of the series, it just gets fucking like repetitive. Okay, I'm gonna say nobody likes, but I cannot speak for all readers, just me and I know a few others, do not like when a trilogy is about the same couple. Like, it just gets repetitive to me. I get so annoyed by them. It doesn't need to happen. So, I did enjoy it. I gave them all four stars, but I don't think it should have been a trilogy, especially that last book. It was like, where the fuck are we going with this? We're just sitting around. But I would recommend it. I do really think that this is like the Santiago trilogy by Catherine Wilcher. Like, I think the Santiago trilogy is a bit more of a modern one as in it was published like six years later i think so the heroine in that one is a lot more like stronger less meek i guess and i do like the santiago trilogy a little bit more but that being said i didn't hate the twist me series as much as i thought i would didn't love it as much as i could have though then i dnf'd carnival of bones by pen cassidy this one looked like it had um some spooky promises to it but i did dnf it just because i got like 13 percent into it got bored by it and then didn't pick it up for like two weeks so i was just like i'm gonna put you down for now and put you in the dnf pile i may come back to it it is definitely a little it's a menage romance and i've only read a few of those i feel like they're really hard to find so i definitely would come back to it i'm not too sure if i will though I mean, I've said that so many times before. I'm like, yeah, I'd come back to it. I never fucking came back to them. So, who knows. Next up, I read In Chaos We Reign by Ammo Jones. This is the fourth and last book in the Midnight Mayhem series, which I was heartbroken because I really wanted Dove and Cohen's story. Then they did some fucked up bullshit in the last book, and I was like, mm, maybe not. I feel like they are just like death reincarnated, both of them. And they just like do everything for each other. They don't give a fuck about anybody except for each other. I loved following them through the series. So I was like, oh, did we get the book or not? We didn't. That's fine. This book follows Cartier and Keaton. And I'm going to put up a spoiler warning right now because I want to talk about this book, Real Thoughts, for those who have read it. So if you plan on reading it, skip to the next book. Spoilers incoming. So my biggest problem with this one is that Cartier is like everybody's little sister, right? But she's a boss bitch and she's running Midnight Mayhem at the same time. Like, how the fuck does she go from acting like that, not just pretending to act like that, but literally acting like that, and then being a boss bitch? I don't understand, and I feel like it was two different sides to her that were too drastic to be the same person. That was my main issue with it. I didn't really love how she was so much of a boss bitch. At the same time, it was a good wrap-up. I rated it four stars, I'm pretty sure. I was about to rate it five stars, but then I was like, you know what? It could have been a bit better. Cartier could have been a better fucking character and a little less annoying and overdone but Keaton he was really hot he did have some parts where I was like bro you you doing too much but he was pretty hot and the whole wrap-up I was like yeah this is totally how it goes it wrapped up very well for me and even though I'm sad to see the series go I've come to peace with it and I think it was a great wrap-up. Next book was Truth or Kill by AC Kramer. Now this one I was really excited to get to honestly. I hyped it up so much in my head and then when I finally read it it was a letdown and a half. It kind of gave me the premise of like they're both in the mafia or like some elite world and they meet together and they like literally play a game of truth or kill and yeah, that's kind of what happened, but I felt a little bit duped by the heroine. She wasn't what I thought she was going to be, which was pretty much my fault because I hyped it up too much, but wasn't all that. I couldn't feel a connection to the characters. I thought it was kind of insta-lovey and honestly a little boring as well. So I rated it three stars and then 3.5 on the spicy scale. Next up, I read Mafia Madman. Now, I'll be honest, I was not planning on picking this book up, but then I saw it come out and I was like, mm, I might. And then I did, obviously. The first two books in this series, because this is book three, were all right. The first one was fine. Then the second one, I was like, what the fuck? And it had some elements and some, like, tropes to it that I really hated. I feel like the writing and the characters were kind of, like, something you would find in a, like, trashy romance novel that you find at the thrift store. And that wasn't really the vibe that I wanted to read at that moment. Honestly, it's not really the vibe I ever want to read. And I almost felt the exact same with this book. The heroine was stronger in 
this one. She was also pretty annoying. The hero was kind of like cutthroat and ruthless for no reason. I will say though, I did enjoy the single parent in this one. I normally hate single parents in books, but this one I didn't hate as much as I thought it would. Yes, he didn't think about his kids all the time, and I didn't really realize he had kids until like 15%, but at the same time, as soon as he got them back, he was like, these kids are my world, and I could really see that. I mean, obviously along with the heroine, but I kind of hated this one too. I don't know. I just felt really like trashy romance novel. I, that's all I can do to describe it. I didn't hate it, but it definitely wasn't what I was looking for in a mafia romance. I rated it 3.5 stars and then 4 on the spicy scale. Next up, I read Because You Said by C.L. Menegon, and <laughs> let's just say this. If you want to read this book, skip past my review of it. If you want to know what I like rated it, I rated it 3.75 stars and then 2.75 on the spice scale. Now, if you don't plan on reading it or really, really want to hear my spoiler filled review of it, here we go. So this one, I was pretty excited for it. I saw it coming and I was like, yeah, I'm putting this on the TBR. It was a live release, which was actually very interesting. Never had one of those. I read, but I picked it up. I read it in one day. I was like, okay, these characters kind of seem good. Okay, I like where this is going. It was giving very much insta lust and like within two days of knowing each other, he like flew her out to LA. <laughs> I was like, okay. But then my biggest, biggest fucking issue was there is a part, I think it's like 60, mm mm. 40% in where something happens and it's like a big kind of like event too. She gets like assaulted I think and then instead of calling the cops and having like a restraining order against the dude who had like a stalker obsession with her or like doing something like that. She just runs away and I'm like what? I get the point but you also had like so many people behind you and I didn't get why she did that and I was really like girl you did not have to do all that and I found it really annoying because it affected the entire book. I kind of enjoyed my reading experience like I said it was 3.75 stars. I wanted to give the author the benefit of the doubt because this is her first release but I didn't really enjoy it and I felt the characters also had like this instant connection and I didn't really feel their connection so yeah unfortunately this wasn't the best rockstar romance I've read even though the cover is gorgeous and I really wanted it to be. <laughs> Next up is Twisted Pride by Cora Riley. Now I thought I had given Cora Riley my like last go because I read her books September of last year actually and I gave three of them three stars or lower and then I was like yeah no more Cora Riley for me but I was feeling like I wanted to pick one up out of the blue and so I fucking did and I actually really loved it like this book gave psychopath hero and like capture captive kidnapping kind of vibes and I was obsessed with it I rated it 4.25 stars and then 3.5 on the spice scale it was so good I do think that the end dragged on a little bit and uh, spoiler warning here but at the end she chooses him over her family and I did have some issues with that because I was like mm, I could not do that but that was a personal thing so I really enjoyed it I totally recommend it I am hoping to do a psychopath hero recommendation video for spooky season so if you guys want that let me know down in the comments I will also be doing polls before I get going on my spooky season content to see what you guys really really want to see versus what may happen like next year basically <laughs> so yeah let me know down in the comments and keep an eye out for those polls but i really enjoyed twisted pride and if i did do a psychopath hero recommendation video it would totally be on there next up is departed whispers by j rose i hated this book um i don't really remember what it's about though so let me read my goodreads review i just remember i did not enjoy it it was paranormal and reverse harem and i really enjoyed the paranormal aspect but we all know that i am very hungry for any paranormal i can get i don't really have anything to compare bad paranormal to so it's just, it's just like all paranormal to me but this one my issue was multiple things i didn't feel the connection they were childhood friends to lovers and we saw none of the past so i was like are you actually friends or are you just saying this shit I am it was very it was kind of like insta lovey one of the guys hated her and that dragged on for a very long time I don't really know how to like describe books that I just didn't like for no reason <laughs> this is one of those books it wasn't necessarily bad I didn't have a good time reading it though I rated it 3.25 stars and 3.75 on the spice scale oh I remember there was daddy kink in this one and it came out of fucking left field <laughs> I was like what the fuck <laughs> That was pretty funny. Next up though, I read Hair on Mill. And it's a new fucking favorite, okay? This one was so good. So this is a romantic horror. Is a lot of horror in this one. I was actually in the car reading this and I passed it to my best friend and I was like, that is fucking horrific, okay? And she's like, girl, what? This is basic. And I'm like, what the fuck? She reads fantasy. So she has like an extra horror layer to her. I don't know. But I was like, nah, this shit is whack. As a first time like semi-horror reader, I was like, what the fuck is this? But I really 
loved it. It's very creepy. It's very gothic. This is a step-sibling romance. The heroine comes back from, like, an insane asylum and then, like, basically falls in love with one of her stepbrothers. But, like, and, yeah, there's a bunch of secrets that they unravel together. And I was totally here for this book. It was awesome. It quickly became a favorite. And I rated it. 4.5 stars and then 4.25 on the spice scale because this shit was spicy. My only complaint is that the author first wrote this as a novella because even though it was, like, 250 pages or something, there was a bit of details missing, but to be honest, I was kind of okay with that. I had a great fucking time reading it, and I really enjoyed it. Next up, I read Hellgate by Veronica Eden. This premise got me so excited. It was basically this foster girl goes to a new foster home, gets dared by her foster siblings to, like, summon a demon with a Ouija board. I think it's called a Ouija board, and she, then she does, and there are three guys that, like, are after her and need to kill her, but then they realize that there's something up here, and that first part was great. Like, until 30%, it was so good, and then there was just so many twists and so many turns, and it was, like, like 450 pages and I was like for what this could have easily been 375 350 and they don't get to like the whole point of the book until 90% into the book maybe it was 80 but like still there was not enough time to do what needed to be done and what the whole reason for the book was so I rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars and then 4 out of 5 on the spice scale the paranormal part of this was great the spooky season vibes were there it was witchy it was creepy I enjoyed it but I feel like it was too long and the plot kind of let me down a bit then I dnf'd dollhouse by Kyla Faye I didn't have to that 17% because I'm trying not to get this confused with the next book I read but she was in an abusive relationship something happened to the dude and then a few years later she's a stripper and these dudes are eyeing her up and then they kidnap her I'm pretty sure I was just kind of annoyed by the heroine I was like sensing that she was going to be a heroine I did not like and so I DNF'd it then and there I didn't really get too much into it and I don't rate DNFs because if I didn't read the whole book then how am I going to fucking rate it I don't feel qualified to do that yeah I didn't rate this one but I don't think I would have loved it and even though I didn't want to DNF it I did DNF it <laughs> then I read Pretty White Lies by C.A. Mariah okay I have some fucking thoughts about this one if you want to read this book once again spoiler warning please skip on to the next one i fucking hated this book these two characters are the fucking horniest couple that I have read in so long. I didn't understand what the need was for all that horniness. Uh, yeah, it was spicy, but it wasn't even good spice. And it's a student teacher romance and it had no slow burn. Like where is the slow burn in the student teacher? I've heard two student teachers and they had slow burn it and they like kissed or did something at like 40, 50%. And that's what I need, okay? I can't do them fucking at 30%. Like, what the hell? And then at the end of the book, the heroine goes from, like, cute 18-year-old girl that everybody hates because she's so pretty and curvy and she's, like, got it all, turns into a fucking serial killer and cuts up a girl she hates and buries her and then frames another dude for murder. And I'm like, what the absolute fuck? How do we get from A to B so quickly? I did not enjoy it. I rolled my eyes at it. Yes, I did finish it, but I was kind of reading it purely for entertainment at that point. I was like, girl, you're fucking crazy, but it's funny. Uh, I didn't like these characters at all. The guy was fine, but the fact that he dated a girl that was like that crazy and didn't do anything about it, like I normally don't discriminate. If you're crazy, that's fine. You're usually entertaining to read, but this one, oh, she got on my nerves. Yeah, we're gonna stop before I continue ranting, but I rated this one two stars. This is the first two star book that I've read in a very long time. What was that I was saying about having a great reading month? <laughs> the last book I read was Key of Cunning by Christy, L Katie Lowry, sorry. Actually, I should have DNF'd this one. I didn't, I skimmed the last 40% though. Basically, this girl goes to live with this guy that's like mysteriously had seven wives disappear. Okay, spoilers again right here. If you want to read it, then um, I'd say bye right here. Thanks for watching. I would not recommend you read it, by the way. I rated it three stars, but I kind of skimmed it, so I don't feel qualified to rate it under three stars. But yeah, basically, she goes to live with him. Then about 40-50% into the book, once they're married, marriage of convenience, basically, even though she thinks she's in love with him, she realizes that he has a fucking dungeon in his castle or some shit, and that's where he's hiding his wives. They're fucking like sex slaves, I think. And I was like, what? Where did this darkness come from? Where did this come from? It was a plot twist that was so sideways. I was so confused. And then she got in on it. Like she went with him to go find more slaves for them. And I was like, what? Neither of the characters were likable. Neither of them were hot. I didn't feel like I needed to continue reading it after 40%, but I did want to see the end, so I skimmed it. I still could be incorrect about what I just said and like the premise of the plot I gave because I didn't read it all. So yeah, 
I don't know what to tell y'all. I didn't enjoy this one. It was whack as hell, y'all. Okay, that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I think I had a great reading month. Then my DNFs would say otherwise, but I'm very excited for September. I know it's gonna be so good. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you guys in my next video very soon.